Got news for you, baby. You're looking at the man. No, man. No, man. I'm going to see the outtakes. It's going to be the whole video. <laughs> Hey guys, back with another video log. Today I want to talk about uh, your maintenance calories. Now we hear this term used a lot in the fitness industry, maintenance calories. What are your maintenance calories? Your maintenance calories is the daily calorie level that you require to maintain your body weight, okay? Hence maintenance. Now your maintenance calories are gonna be made up of a few different things. You have your resting metabolic rate, your RMR, okay? That's basically how many calories you burn just to keep the lights on, just to continue running your body's systems uh, at rest. And that's gonna be about 60% of your entire uh, metabolic rate. Then you're gonna have things like, uh, smaller things like uh, non-exercise adaptive thermogenesis or NEAT, which is, ver which is really variable. There's a huge fluctuation in NEAT from uh, dieting, not dieting, these sorts of things. Um, then you're gonna have the thermic effect of food uh, and you're also going to have your, your activity thermogenesis. You're also going to have like, uh, which is exercise. You're al you also, some people separate uh, NEAT further into, because NEAT can be kind of fidgeting, like it's kind of like small movements throughout the day. You've also got um, non-exercise activity that it can be separated into. But all those things basically add up to make what is your uh, total daily energy expenditure. And your TDEE is the same thing as your maintenance. So if you're eating the number of calories that equates to your TDEE, uh, you'll maintain your body weight. Now people ask me, what's the best way to find this? Well, there's a lot of equations out there um, and most of them will probably get you in the ballpark for most of you guys. You've got things like Harris Benedict, the revised Harris Benedict by Rosa. Uh, you've got the uh, Catch McArdle. You've got the Mueller. Um, you've got the Schofeld, there, there's quite a, uh, uh, Milton St. Jor, uh, there's quite a few equations out there. Most of them will be within a few hundred calories of each other. Uh, I have, you know, some I prefer over others. Some are better for obese people, some are better for athletes. Um, but for the most part, keep in mind that they're not, it's, it's not a, these are just predictions, okay? The only way to really know, and my personal favorite way, is to Honestly, just track your intake. So track what you're eating and compare uh, your weight every day, or not every day, sorry. Weigh yourself every day and take the average for the week and see what your weight is doing relative to your calories. If you're maintaining your weight over the course of several weeks by and large, if your average is the same, then you can be relatively assured that you're at your maintenance calories. Or let's say you're losing a little bit of weight. Well, now you know you're probably a little bit under your maintenance. Uh, or if you're gaining a little bit of weight, you know you're a little bit over your maintenance. So those are, that is the practical way to know because at the end of the day, it's what you're eating. Uh, some equation can say something, some indirect telemetry test can say something, but at the end of the day, what you're eating and what your body weight is doing is gonna be the practical measure of where your maintenance calories are at. Now I want you guys to also understand something. Your maintenance calories are not set. Maintenance is a moving number, okay? A lot of people get this wrong. When they say maintenance calories, they think that that is a set number. And I hear this especially when people talk about recovery diets after contest prep because uh, like Eric Helms and Alan Argon, they popularize this. And they say, uh, take your calories back up to your maintenance calories. Again, if it is your maintenance, by definition, you would not gain weight. I'll say it again. If you take your calories to maintenance, then by definition, you will not gain weight. But your maintenance after a 12 week diet is going to be much different than your maintenance at the peak of a bulk, okay? Your maintenance at the peak of a bulk, because you have more lean body mass and you have more body fat, body fat actually is not completely metabolically inert, um, you're gonna have a higher metabolic rate. Also, you're gonna have, your needs gonna be higher, you're gonna have higher levels of thermogenesis, 
Uh, I've talked about all these metabolic adaptations um, that, that make your metabolism slower as you diet down. So all these are reasons that your maintenance in the like a peak of an off season is going to be much higher than your maintenance by the end of a diet. Okay. So you need to account for that. And I fully agree with them. And, and for example, in this situation, take your calories back up to maintenance. That's fine. But again, if it was truly your maintenance, you would not gain weight by definition. Okay. This is a very popular question we got uh, a couple weeks ago when I, when Holly and I talked about diet breaks. Um, people said they were taking their calories up to their maintenance during their diet breaks and they were gaining body fat. Well, you were taking your calories back up to your original predicted maintenance, but your predicted maintenance and your actual maintenance at the end of a diet are going to be much, much, much different. And actually the diet break study showed this. They showed that, a, that if you diet straight for 16 weeks, that your maintenance, what your actual maintenance is versus what your predicted maintenance is are way different. Now, diet breaks actually help them keep those closer. But again, what I want to emphasize is your maintenance is a moving number. It is not something that you can necessarily pin down. And your maintenance at the end of a diet versus the end of a long caloric surplus is going to be much, much different. So keep that in mind. Um, you can use these equations to recalculate your maintenance depending on uh, where you're at but you're going to have to mostly use equations that rely on, on, on lean body mass and body fat versus those that rely on height and weight um, because those aren't going to be as accurate for, for those sorts of changes. And, but the best way in my mind is to track your nutrition. This is why tracking is so important because when you track, you understand your budget because your daily macros and your daily calories are like a budget. And tracking your budget is the best way to know how you can allot that budget. All right, guys, if you've liked this video, like it, subscribe, and visit my website, biolane.com. Thanks, guys.